Okay, so we are just a few moments past three o'clock and I see that we have a number of attendees joining us. So appreciate all of you joining in. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, we've been doing these weekly webinars for a few weeks now and each time we have been providing a PowerPoint really just to guide the conversation and that's what today's will be as well. So I'll share this with you all so that we can get started. Okay, and again, just wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Again, this is our weekly briefing by the emergency uh, leadership team, the executive policy group of the emergency leadership team, which are the, the four of us represented on the call. Um, myself, Dr. Jackson, Dean Snavely, Dean Busby, Chief Holland. And today we have a very special guest who will be introduced a little later in the webinar. And just want to provide just a little bit of information as we get started. Um, as a reminder, and in reference to our weekly webinar last week, we want to thank all of you who have completed the acknowledgement form. Uh, we've got about 75 responses to that so far. So we're encouraged by that. Uh, thank you to everyone who has taken the time to read and acknowledge the Protect the Pride plan. We will continue to share that in our communications. And if you haven't already had the chance to do so, please visit our COVID-19 resource page and take a look at that. Uh, the acknowledgement form is also linked on the page and you can find it in our emails that we've shared. We'll make sure to include that in our follow-up email from today's webinar as well. And as a reminder, just kind of um, keeping it top of mind, if you have any questions that aren't answered by this webinar or just any general questions at all, please don't ever hesitate to contact us at l-u-e-l-t at langston.edu and we'll be sure to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And I'd now like to introduce Dr. Ruth Jackson. He'll provide us with an update on our COVID-19 status. Dr. Jackson. Thank you, Mrs. Powell. Before we review the plan, we would like to give you an update on the current situation of COVID-19 for the local vicinity and for our university community. Uh, as of noon today in Oklahoma, there was a total of 6,065,053 cases, which represents a 1.3% increase. There were 9,930 active cases, which is a slight decrease. Uh, deaths, 854, with a total recovered 54,269. In Logan County, there are currently 331 total cases, with 52 of them being active. There's been one death, but 278 recoveries. Langston University has, a total, has had a total of 17 cases. Currently, 12 of them are active. Please continue to monitor our resource page for additional updates. We will be focusing today's webinar on the cleaning guidance and protocol with our special guest, Mr. Emmanuel Manny Hoge of Sodexo Facilities. Uh, Manny is a district safety coordinator for environmental services manager two with Sodexo. He has over eight years of experience in facility management, strategic planning, project and program management, infection prevention and control, as well as safety and risk management. He has a diverse background from various industries before joining us in his current position with Sodexo here at Langston University. So welcome, Manny. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. Could you please tell us generally about some of the operational protocols that you've implemented to address COVID-19 here on our campus? Oh, yeah, certainly. Um, to start off, um, the services that we provide here uh, both include preventive and reactive cleaning of spaces within quarantine accommodations. Uh, strict protocols are in place to ensure the safety of our staff and clients. Uh, this includes wearing of protective um, and then how to properly on and off, which is taking them, um, putting them on and taking them off. 
uh, also during the course of planning for infection control. COVID-19 can leave on surfaces and there is a risk of transmission via touching hands surfaces, specifically high touch areas. Uh, like doorknobs, light fixtures, uh, light switches, etc., must and are regularly disinfected. At this time, it is believed that COVID 19 spreads through the air, and as part of our protocols, we have eliminated and reduced activities that may encourage particles to aerosolize. This includes no dusting, flushing, the toilets after cleaning, and a preference for pre moisture wipes, such as Oxivia wipes. Okay, so many th thanks for, for giving us a general overview uh, on some of the operation protocols on, on campus. So if you could, could you explain uh, the difference between, I and mean, we use a lot of different words on campus, especially uh, really just in general. And can you, so can you explain the difference between cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, and sterilizing? Certainly. To start off with cleaning, um, cleaning is the removal of food residue, dirt, debris, and, or other undesirable debris. Uh, it requires some level of energy, such as like, you know, elbow grease. And most importantly, we apply chemicals such as detergents to help remove uh, such debris. Only, cleaning only removes dirt. It does not kill bacteria. However, sanitizing, on the other hand, is designed to reduce the number of microorganisms to a safe level. It is performed after cleaning. Um, on clean surfaces, we reduce the surface uh, will reduce the effectiveness of sanitizing. So all surfaces that come in contact with food must be cleaned and sanitized regularly. Disinfecting, on the other hand, eliminates all pathogenic microorganisms except for bacterial spores. And sterilizing kills all microorganisms. Thank you for that, Manny. Um, also, could you please tell us more about the tools, chemicals, and equipment used by Sodexo? Yeah, definitely. Um, so our site is utilizing healthcare great tools and chemicals for our area and spaces. Uh, the following items have been recommended and purchased from Sodexo approvers. All clean tools and are now being used as single use. Um, this includes mop heads. Uh, we've actually started using um, Oxivier disinfectant wipes, which are disposable after each use. Uh, so with, with single-use system, um, we want to eliminate cross-contamination. So when an area is cleaned with a, a mop head, we would take it out for cleaning or disposal purposes, and then move on to using a cleaner um, mop head in a different area. So uh, in order to reduce cross-contamination, uh, we've uh, actually implemented an it, by buying more equipment to and, and, and actually st stabilized our, um, our systems in a way that uh, when uh, a tool or equipment is used, we don't use it again until it is disinfected properly and cleaned. All right, so, so Manny, real quick, uh, and, and thanks for, for uh, reviewing those definitions with us. If you could, could you give us um, some additional detail on the frequency of cleaning uh, uh, on and around the campus? Well, before I get to the frequency and cleaning, uh, I would like to touch more on electrostatic sprays that we've also, it's another tool that we use here. Um, electrostatic sprays are professional cordless electrostatic uh, sprayer that is charged, electrically charged to, um, to help use the chemicals in, in a way that it actually saves us time, we use, we use less liquid, and it covers more surfaces. The, elect the Victory sprayers is patent technology that provides an electrical charge to solutions, allowing them to wrap conductive surfaces with effective and even coverage. Of double charge particles envelope all conductive surfaces. So this technology is used to um, sanitize every location that we have on campus after the, after the day ends. Um, so our cleaning process in, in, includes 
uh, removing the dirt and debris, and then a, a special team comes in to use the electrostatic sprayers to disinfect areas after cleaning is complete. Also, we do have a chemical that we use here called vital oxide. It is also um, an EPA registered hospital disinfectant cleaner uh, that kills mold and eliminates odor. Its formula contains a unique form of stabilized chlorine dioxide that is very effective at killing bacteria, viruses, mold, yet non-corrosive and is enough to handle without causing skin irritation. It is ready to use with no mixing required, just spray, wipe, and fog from the bottle straight to the, to the surface that you're trying to, in, to disinfect. Also, we do have a chemical called BioSQ. This is the chemical that we actually live in in um, classrooms uh, with paper towels. This particular product is capable of cleaning, sanitizing, disinfecting, and deodorizing in a single step. BioSQ is a botanical disinfectant solution, and it is natural, it's a natural solution uh, for a wide range of cleaning challenges. This innovative product features a patent Timex technology and botanically derived, um, derived active ingredients. It is a one-step cleaner with bacteri bactericidal, virucidal, tuberculocidal, and fungicidal claims. This is a broad spectrum disinfectant registered with the EPA and claims to disinfect all surf a whole wide array of surfaces. Um, this product can be used without personal protective equipment. So, um, and that was why I had to encourage uh, the university to use this product in all classrooms to help um, limit or reduce transmission of COVID-19 on our campus. Um, I have two more chemicals to talk about, um, uh, but before I get to that, I'll talk about Oxivir wipes. Um, Oxivir wipes are ready to use disinfectant cleaner wipes. Uh, they contain advanced hydrogen peroxide, uh, which can disinfect surfaces in less than um, a minute, which is 60 seconds. It is effective for killing bacteria, um, viruses, mold, and it meets the standard for cleaning bloodborne pathogens and bodily fluids as well. Uh, this particular wipes is, uh, we, you would have as a, as a user, you have to go through some training and requires PPE. But um, per our protocols, this is uh, one of the cleaning agents that we use to uh, sanitize the regularly touched areas, like high high touched areas like doorknobs, light switches, um, entry entryways, because of how effective it is. Uh, However, we can't use it for every surface out there because it can change the color and, and discolor, um, like say for instance, wood. But um, with that being said, we had to keep digging and digging and we uh, came up with another cleaning chemical called uh, Ecolab um, Peroxide Motor Surface Cleaner. This actually recently came out, it's called QC57. Um, it used to just, it used to be called the Motor Surface Cleaner, but they added the disinfectant agents to it. Uh, at this time, it is, it is actually also registered with uh, the EPA and it can kill moral, uh, neural viruses in fast, as fast as 45 seconds. So uh, we have them in stock and we actually uh, started using them to clean all um, high touch areas as well, such as glass, uh, doors, entryways, and also disinfecting um, surfaces because it's a multi-surface cleaner. Now, Dean, to answer your question, which is our frequencies, um, the ELT and Sodexo worked relentlessly uh, to determine high traffic areas and um, also put together priority cleaning uh, for areas that will require more than uh, daily cleaning. Uh, common areas are clean according to Sodexo's standard operating procedures for prevent, preventive disinfection, taking additional precautions uh, for possible infectious agents. So those high traffic areas are clean more than twice a day. Um, the cleaning crew, we, I have two shifts here. The cleaning crew comes in at three o'clock and leave at 11.30 p.m. This, uh, the, the first shift comes in at 7 a.m. Then the first thing they do is check in on all these high traffic areas to make sure they are good for uh, for business, for 
normal business operation. Um, they go back in after lunch to refresh, sanitize, clean and sanitize the, these areas and make them ready for the second shift that comes in at three o'clock to continue the services that we provide here. Also, um, as part of the high traffic areas, we do um, go through and refresh all restrooms on campus and um, making sure that all corridors and common areas are cleaned as well. Um, um, I hope that answered your question, Dean Busby. Yeah, so may I just, I'll stop for a second while um, you, you highlighted something I think that's important. So um, we have, as we've shared on other calls, the executive policy group and the emergency leadership team, uh, we meet on a daily basis. Two of those meetings uh, a week are dedicated to facilities or operational related matters and um, Manny and his teams have worked relentlessly um, as we've worked through sort of the scope of work and the operational protocols that he's just described. All of those things are based on the operational posture in which we find ourselves. So um, at, for example, in the first week, first essentially two weeks of cleaning, we were placing more or of, of the semester, we were placing emphasis in fall semester classes and in housing areas. Um, and then as our operational posture adjusted, we had that week of all virtual classes um, that allowed us to do other cleaning items throughout the campus. So just wanted everyone to have a frame of reference that um, our, our daily posture from a cleaning standpoint is um, daily cleanings. Um, but then we adjust that based on the traffic or the work that's being done in particular areas. So appreciate all of that you described there, Manny, and throwing a lot of good info at us and um, be good for people to review this webinar, but maybe just take a step back for a second and talk a little bit about just general tips, responsibilities um, of the community, how we're all in this together and any insight or advice you can give to everyone generally. Well, thank you. Um, for, for starters, I, I would like to say uh, thank you for this opportunity to share um, my, my tips and also um, add a few other information that uh, could help each and every one of us. Um, I believe safety is always first. Um, as, as, as we proceed to making sure that we protect ourselves, we got to always remember that um, it's not it's not just here at work, um, we are also at home and we gotta protect ourselves at home as well. Uh, to start with, uh, I would say that we have to be respectful and also uh, all residents on campus, uh, observe proper social distancing and hygiene protocols, able to utilize. Hey, hey, so, I'm having sorry. a little bit of trouble with your audio, I think. Um, you it's may mute yourself and unmute and see if that helps and have you okay. jump back in just see if all right okay. we'll try it again um how about now uh -huh. is it is it better now i think so keep going okay um so uh just like like i was saying to start with i i, I would say that let's all respectful staff, uh, students, and residents on campus observe proper social distance and hygiene protocols. It is, if able, please uh, make sure that we use a self-cleaning tools to wipe up uh, messes and disinfect frequently touched areas. Because uh, we are all in this together, um, we can't, with efforts to work as a team, um, we have to always remember that we are one community and wearing and, and respecting each other's space can actually help uh, reduce the risk of transmission. Also remember to also wear uh, PPE uh, when required, respect all PPE users, um, use designated receptacles for trash and separate them from, your, from laundry as well. If possible, only use personal items that can be laundered. Dry cleaning at this time is not recommended. Um, report maintenance issues with your rooms, especially that's for residents that stay on campus, um, such as broken items, AC malfunctioning, 
um, because we do want to encourage uh, the air cycle in every apartment. Uh, the, the constant airflow would help reduce the risk of an infection as well. Uh, cleaning rooms during isolation period by using proper or approved cleaning procedures and cleaning products as well. Um, I also would like to say that I will end it with report symptoms to medical personnel. If you do not feel well, if you are not feeling or uh, having symptoms of the virus, please report it to medical personnel and comply with medical recommendations. And I think if we all can observe all these tips and responsibilities, I, I, I feel confident that we are going to be all right and, so, and, and power through this together. Well, thank you, Manny. Um, just on behalf of the EPG, I want to thank you for joining us today and for sharing your expertise. We know your teams are working incredibly hard. And we want to pause here for just a moment um, and entertain any questions that we might have concerning what you've presented. Thank you. I see, yeah, thank you, sir. I see that there is a question um, regarding the CTUs. Yeah, happy to take that from Professor O. I um, many of you have now seen, I know we have some students, faculty, and staff on the call. We utilize, um, you've seen around 50 now in, in various classrooms, what we call classroom technology units or CTUs. And the CTUs, um, the, the main importance around cleaning to them is not to spray the materials directly on um, the machine itself, but to spray it on a um, electronic friendly rag. Uh, the uh, cleaning materials that were provided in the classroom can be used on the CTUs as long as they're applied to a rag first, so just don't spray anything directly on the screen. Um, and I believe provided some of those rags, we're going to continue to swap out and replenish that supply. If, if you as a faculty member discover that there's a room without the kind of cleaning materials you need, please use that L-U-E-L-T at langston.edu account um, for questions or emails. And um, the ELT will work with um, Manny's team and others to ensure that those are replenished. I know I've already sent a couple of emails to Manny via the ELT saying, hey, I think this hand sanitizer station might be out. And almost immediately his team's have gotten over um, to check that out. So we can't fix things that we're not aware of. So good question and just keep those questions coming to the ELT account. And if you have other questions, please feel free to use the Q&A function or drop those in the chat and we'll be happy to answer those here. And if it's something that Manny can help answer, I know he is happy to do so as well. Dr. Jackson, maybe you can take that question from Dr. Pema or man, so, maybe you can as well, sort of double, you know, both of you maybe respond on that one. Sure, so the question is, uh, is there cleaning on the Tulsa campus in the same way as the Langston campus? And uh, yes, it's Wine Langston University and the same protocols that are uh, followed here on the Langston campus are also followed um, in Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Manny, is there anything you'd like to add? Yes, um, just to expand on it a little bit, I, I do have um, employees stationed in, on, on both urban campuses. And uh, what we do is uh, follow our standard operating procedures. They have all gone through training and uh, we provide similar services that we provide here on the main campus. So um, they do also have the electrostatic handheld um, disinfectant uh, sprayers and um, they use that after cleaning is complete. Also, they, they, they have all the cleaning products that we do have here as well. And um, again, uh, our goal is to make sure that uh, we provide a safe environment for everybody that go to Langston. Thank you.
just keep it open for another minute or two here to see if there's any other questions in the Q&A or in the chat. If you wake up in the middle of the night with that burning cleaning question that only Manny can answer, send us an email and we'll, we'll make sure he uh, gets a response to you right away. I think those electrostatic sprayers, Manny, look like the Ghostbuster backpacks. Oh, yes. So I feel like you need a theme song when you're out there spraying throughout the campus. But um, I, I know lots of folks have um, seen those in use, and, and it was a good investment that the university and Sodexo made to ensure we speed up that cleaning time. Correct, correct. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. It, is, it has been a blessing. Uh, reducing the labor hours that we spend to um, providing precautionary disinfection and also uh, decontaminating an area, which again has been a complete blessing to have. So thank you all for approving it. Okay, Dr. Sultani, thank you. We'll, we will look for your communication through the uh, ELT account. Okay, well, with that, um, again, if you have any questions, please send those to luelt at langston.edu. And we're gonna move on and I'm going to um, ask Dr. Jackson to share some final words with us, um, reflecting on some resilience within our community. Dr. Jackson. Sure. From the very beginning of this pandemic, we've been consistent in saying that it's the resilience of our university community that's going to see us through. A part of this, is everyone playing an active role in creating a safe and healthy environment. As a part of our weekly webinars, we intend to spotlight examples of this resiliency seen across the campus. In this presentation, you'll see pictured uh, students from the School of Nursing and Health Professions. These students volunteered to do temperature screening during our campus move-in. On behalf of the university, I'd like to give a special thanks to the following students. Aaliyah Mack. Aaliyah is from Cincinnati, and she transferred to Langston University to pursue her nursing degree. She graduates in 2021, and she hopes to become a labor and delivery nurse and then further her education to become a nurse midwife. We also have Dietrich Walker Franklin, who's from Houston. Dietrich came to Langston specifically to pursue his nursing degree. After graduation, he plans to become a certified registered, registered nurse anesthetist. Then there is Essence Nicholson, also a graduating senior from Moore, Oklahoma. She hopes to become a certified registered nurse anesthetist as well. Emma Holbrook is from Perry. Emma already has a degree in psychology from OSU, but she quickly realized that she wanted to become a nurse and chose to pursue that nursing degree here at Langston. She plans to work in a med surge unit and eventually continue her education and earn a doctorate in nursing. Not pictured here is Teresa Walker. Teresa's from Oklahoma City. She's looking forward to graduating soon and becoming a pediatric nurse. She also hopes to include some travel nursing as well. These students were a tremendous help to us during the move-in. Several visitors and parents commented on the professionalism of our nursing students. So thank you for that. If you know of any acts of, resi of resilience, please share them with the EPG through 
emailing l-u-e-l-t at langston.edu. Our next weekly webinar will be held on Monday, September 14th at 3 o'clock. Our topic will be CARES Act Emergency Grant Funds for Students. As always, please continue to monitor your Langston University email as well as our COVID-19 resource page for more information and updates. Again, please remember to complete the acknowledgement form for the Protect the Pride plan if you have not done so already. At any time, if you have any questions, please direct them to l-u-e-l-t at langston.edu. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.